Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. In this video I want to talk about a special type of collection that stores key value pairs of data and in C++ that type of collection is called map. If you're coming from some other programming language like Java, JavaScript, C Sharp, Python and so on, in those languages this type of collection exists as well, but it is called dictionary. Now, one interesting fact is that I never learned about this type of collection in university, but once I started working, this became one of the most common data collections that I use alongside lists and arrays. And as you will see, map collection can be very useful in some situations. And if you watch this video until the end, you are going to understand how and when to use this type of collection. So now I'm going to show you the app that we are going to build. But first, I need to teach you about map data collection. So a map data collection stores elements in key value pairs. So each element is called pair and it consists of key and value. And the best example of this is a dictionary. So let's say that you are learning German language and you are building a dictionary. So English German dictionary and you have a key which is the word strawberry for example. So that is your key and then the value is something that you want to associate with that key and in this situation that is going to be German translation of the word strawberry which is the Erdbeere. It's like um, a berry from the earth, so Erdbeere, that's a German word for strawberry. So that means that you are associating a word with its translation. So you are associating string with another string. Now, let's use another example. Let's say that you also want to associate a translation for orange. So your key is going to be English word for orange, and then a value is going to be the translation for that word. But in German, you have two words for orange, the orange and the apfelsine, which means that you are associating a word with a list of translations. So you are associating one string with a list of strings. So what does this mean in our situation? It means that the key is always simple data type. The key is always something like um, a number, an integer, a string or something like that but the value can also be a complex data type. And in this situation, the value is list of strings, but it also can be a structure, it can be another map or something like that, whatever you need. So let me show you how this works in code. So let's build our dictionary application and let's first see how we can do that for the simple example where we are associating a string to another string and then we will see how to do that for complex data types later. So since we are going to work with map collection, I first need to say include map like this. Uh, and then also since we will be using string, I will also say include string like this. And one more thing that I want to do is using namespace std because I will be using map and string and cout and all of those belong to std namespace. So I don't want to say every time std map, std string, std cout and so on. So now that we have added these, let's see how we are going to create our dictionary, how we are going to create our map that associates string with another string. So you say map and then inside these angled brackets you put the type of your key which is going to be string and then the type of your value which is also going to be string. Okay, so we are associating string with another string and we are going to call this map my dictionary like this. So now the question is, how do you insert elements into this dictionary? And that is very simple. So you say my dictionary dot insert. Okay. And then inside parentheses, you say that you want to insert a pair of string key and then string value. And you close these angled brackets. And then inside parentheses, you will provide values for your first string, which is the key. So let's say that will be the word apple. Okay. And then inside another quotation marks, you will provide the value, which is this string here. So 
here will come the translation for the word apple, which is der Apfel, like this. Okay, and let's do a couple more fruits. Let's copy this, and here, let's say, for example, banana. And then here, we are going to say the banana. Okay, so again, you say my dictionary dot insert. You say that you want to insert a pair of string key and string value. And here you provide the key and you provide the value. Okay, so I will add a couple more fruits and then I will be back. So here I added orange and strawberry. And as you can see, I added both translations for orange. So both the orange and the apfelsine as one string because here I said that my dictionary is going to consist of string string so key value pairs are going to be string and another string not string and list of strings but later I'm going to show you that as well so make sure to watch the entire video so now the question is how can I print this dictionary how can I see it in my application so let's do that so it is very easy to print it for that we are going to use for a loop so I will say for auto so for every pair in my dictionary what I want to do is I want to say see out pair dot first which is key and then let's put a little separation like this and then I want to say pair dot second and add end line so I am printing the first part of my pair which is the key and then a little separation and then I'm printing the second part of my pair which is the translation so the value and I can even remove these I don't need them so if I run the program let's see what is going to happen okay so apple banana orange and strawberry perfect now one very interesting thing that I didn't mention and it also stayed hidden because of the way that I wrote my application but it is very important characteristic of map collection is that it orders elements by key in ascending order which means that if your key is a string then the elements are going to be ordered alphabetically so a b c d and so on and then if your key is a number it is going to order them in ascending order again one two three four five and so on so in order to demonstrate and prove this let's close the program and let's mix these a little bit let's say that first we add for example strawberry and then we add orange and then apple and banana so what do you expect to see in the console if I run my program again let me know in the comments so if I run the program again as you can see again we have elements ordered alphabetically so first is apple and then banana and then orange and then strawberry even though I first added strawberry and then orange and then apple and banana so that is one very important characteristic of map collection so again it orders elements in ascending order or alphabetically and that works very fast and it works out of the box so you don't have to do anything it is just available for you to use so Something else that I want to show you is if for any reason you don't want your elements to be ordered alphabetically or in ascending order, you can use a different type of collection which is called unordered map. So in order to use that type of collection, you need to say include unordered map. So like this. And then here the type is going to be unordered map as well. So if I run my program now, as you can see, first is strawberry and then orange and then apple and banana. So they are written in the order that we added them to our dictionary. Okay, so now I'm going to return this to ordered map. So just map like this. And let's continue with some more examples. So something else that you should know is how can you access a specific element? So in order to access a specific element, you use its key and you use square brackets. So let's say, for example, that you want to access this strawberry element. So you say my dictionary and then inside these square brackets, you put the key. 
So let me copy it so that I don't make a typo like this. And one very important thing is that these keys have to be unique. So don't add pairs that have a key that already exists in the dictionary. They have to be unique. Values don't have to be unique, but keys do have to be unique. Okay, so you say, please access inside my dictionary a pair that has this key, strawberry, and then let's say, for example, that you want to set its value so that it says D, so capital letter D, D, Erdbeere, like this. Okay, so if I run my program now, let's see what is going to happen. Okay, and as you can see, this part here has been changed. So here we have lowercase d and then here we have capital letter D. So that is how you access and change your element of a map. Another useful thing that you should know is that there is a function called size, which returns the size of your collection. So you can say, see out my dictionary dot size, and then let's put end line. So if I run the program, you will get the size of this collection, which is four. And as you can see here, we have four elements. Now, what else? Well, let's put here another function, which is called clear, and it is used to delete all the elements from your collection. So you say my dictionary dot clear. Okay, so if I run the program now, as you can see, the dictionary contains zero elements because we cleared it here and then we also don't have any output after this zero. Okay, so those are some functionalities that you should know about. There are a few others as well, but these are used most often. Now, another thing that I promised is to show you how you can have complex data type as your value. So key value pair is going to be simple data type and then complex data type. So let me show you that. So I deleted all of the code except for this part here, since we don't need that code because I want to show you a different example. So now we are going to build a Pokedex. And if you don't know what a Pokedex is, uh, we are basically going to associate the name of a Pokemon with the list of all of the attacks that the Pokemon has. So since we are going to be working with lists, let's say here include list. That is the first thing so that we don't forget it. Okay, so let's create our Pokedex. So let's create a map collection. So I will say map. And as I said, we want to associate the name of a Pokemon, so a string, with the list of the attacks that the Pokemon has. So we are associating string with list of strings. So I will say, please associate string with list of string like this. Okay, and make sure that you put both of these angled brackets, because if you don't, you are going to get an error. Okay, so this is going to be the type of our map, and then the name will be Pokedex, like this. Okay, so how do you add elements into this Pokedex? Well, we are going to do it step by step. So let's first create a list of string which is going to be called, let's say for example, Pikachu attacks, like this, and I will initialize that list. So here I will put all of the attacks that Pikachu has. So let me Google it very quickly. So here are the attacks of Pikachu, uh, Thundershock, Tail Whip, and Quick Attack, all inside quotation marks and separated by comma sign. Okay, so let's create two more Pokemon. So let's say, for example, Charmander and let's say Chikorita, like this. And I will Google attacks for these two Pokemon as well. So I'll be back in a moment. So here is our information. For Charmander, we have Flamethrower and Scary Face. And this Scary Face, it's a real attack. This is the information from Google, so it must be correct. And then for Chikorita, we have Razor Leaf and Poison Powder. Okay, and these three are my three favorite Pokemons. And let me know in the comment section, I would love to read which are your favorites so that I don't feel like a weird 26 year old who still has a favorite Pokemon. <laughs> so 
how can we associate these attacks, so the list of strings, with the name of that Pokemon? How can we add that to our Pokedex? Let's do that next. So we say Pokedex and then insert like this. So, what do we want to insert inside this map called Pokedex? Well, we want to insert a pair of string, and then the second is list of string, like this. And again, make sure that you add two of these, because the first one is for your pair, and then the second one is for this string type. Okay, so we are associating a string with list of strings and then inside these parentheses we will provide our key and our value so the key is Pikachu that is first okay and capital letter P and then the value will be a list of strings called Pikachu attacks okay and then let's copy this two more times so the second Pokemon is going to be Charmander okay and paste it here like this, and then we are going to associate that with a list called Charmander Attacks, and I will do the same for the third Pokemon, so Chikorita, and then we are associating this with Chikorita Attacks. Okay, so how can we print this information to our console? Let me type that code very quickly, and then I will explain how it works. So here is the code that I added, and as you can see, we are using for loop in order to iterate through all the pairs of our Pokedex collection. So we are iterating through these three pairs that we added, that we inserted into our Pokedex. So the first thing that we do is we print pair.first, which is the key, so the name of the Pokemon. And then we use another for loop in order to iterate through pair.second, which is list of attacks. So we print every attack and once we finish that we put an end line and we go again for the next Pokemon. So if I run this program, as you can see we have Charmander which is paired at first and then here we have the list of all of the attacks of Charmander Pokemon and then we put a new line and we go with the next Pokemon. So Chikorita and then the attacks of Chikorita and then Pikachu and its attacks. So that is how you work with complex data types inside your map collection. And that is what I wanted to show you in this video. So if you enjoyed it, please give it a big thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and also share it with your friends who would like to learn programming. And you can even learn together because it is always more fun to learn that way. And in most situations, it is also much easier. So thank you very much for watching. And if you have any questions or any topic that you would like to see in the future, leave that for me in the comment section and I will see you in some other video or you can add me on Instagram or Twitter because I post more often on those platforms. So if you would like to hang out with me more often, definitely add me on IG and I will see you in some other video or on some other platform. Bye!